Module 4 is on implementation. Now, the course is set to go. It is assumed right now that the course has been designed, the course has been written, the course has been pilot tested, and you want to implement. That means it has to go to the students. Remember, in the process of writing, you would have been bringing in some quality assurance measures that will make the material to be able to meet with the goal that is set to meet. Now, what are those things we need to consider when we are dealing with the implementation stage? In the area of uh, presentation, we'll have the content because you finish writing, it has been detailed, now you want to present it to the students. How are you going to do it? They will have a learning management system. There are so many learning management systems, so many and so many, even more and more are coming up. But in choosing your learning management system, whether it's a management policy, but there are some things they need to look at, considering again, their learner's characteristics, their learning environment, and to actually look out for the one that will meet with the learning environment before jumping into any uh, learning management system. Then the economic value too has to be considered and many other things. So right here, for National Open University of Nigeria, we use Modu as our learning management system. So what you need to do is to put, upload the content into the Modu. Again, coming to this angle, the uh, instructional designer with the IT personnel, they could help to do the upload once it is proper, the content is properly structured. And where the content is undergoing structuring, the ID and the necessary team would have been working with the writer. Because at that point, many things have been put into place. Like I did mention in one of the slides, that when you are writing, you may have a need to say, well, I need animation in this area. No, I need to, uh, I need to do some illustrations. Then when you have some things you need to do, you want to do some illustrations, then you might not have the technical know-how to do it. But you know what you want to do. You have the idea. You could call somebody who has the technical know-how, for example, a graphic artist, to put in into drawing before you animate and so on. So right here, there is nothing, don't have a fast rule that say you as a content expert, you must be the one that will upload. No, but wherever you can, it makes work easier and it makes it more interesting because while you are uploading, even if I size some things, but if you are not the one uploading, what are you supposed to do? You have to work with the person uploading the content. After uploading, because you have to certify that yes, the way it is uploaded, that is the way you wanted it for your student. Because you are the content expert. You know how you want to sell this idea. Then the instructional designer must be there to confirm it, to ensure that the way it is uploaded, it will help the learner. Because the instructional designer will always take the place of the student while designing. You are always looking at it from the student angle. If this thing gets to the student, will the student understand it? If this thing gets to the student, will it not be confusing? If this gets to the student, how will the student be able to actually work with it? That is your stand. So there is no hard and fast rule that says, yes, it must be only ID or it must be only SMEs. No, you could work together to achieve it, but if everybody the SMEs can do it, you allow them to do it themselves. Now, facilitation. I will talk detail on this here because we'll have another training on online facilitation. But however, it is good for us to have some snap as SMEs. Because when you are writing too, all these have to be at your fingertips. Because when you are writing and you are going to write for a course that will be self-paced, there is a way you write. When you are writing for a course that will be facilitated, there are some skills you bring in. Because if you bring in some skills for courses that will be self-paced, and you bring in some skill of facilitation, then there will be confusion because that particular time that the learner or the student is supposed to see you, he will not be able to see you because you are not available. So when you are writing, you consider, is it going to be uh, self-paced or is it going to be facilitated? Or is what kind of a learning environment? Is it going to be synchronous 
a learning mode sorry is it going to be synchronous or is it going to be asynchronous whereby the learning mode you want to use is synchronous it equally determine the way you write and if it's going to be synchronous it determines what the way you write if it's going to be blended both oh we're going to be a little bit of this because of the environment you know we don't have much um, internet this and that oh you'll blend it up you know what to do then the king of it all that we make learning really interesting and make us to achieve the set goal because after you have made it you have built everything if this is lacking then it will still have a lot of setback on the part of the learner that is feedback feedback is key when you are designing you would have designed how you want to give feedback so in the process of implementation the feedback must come in and feedback in this instance are feedback you know that will help the learner to have uh, to progress in his or her studies not the one that is computer-based marking yes it's feedback but that is not the kind of feedback that we really really need and when you are giving feedback you have to be careful of the choice of words you use you have to be very careful because you don't have to be insultive you don't have to be insulted before you know oh, I'm giving feedback. A student sometimes could just write everything as if the student ever picked the course material. But then it's still not enough for you to pick on the student and start insulting the student. There are ways you must talk. There are ways you must approach this. There are ways you must uh, talk to the student. And by this way, you discover that the student is already having interaction within the community service. Because you would now be standing out as a model for that student because while you are replying you are writing you are responding the student is equally watching and listening and getting everything you are doing because if it is writing you will read if it is a video you will uh, listen and so on so what we do at the feedback stage it matters a lot and when you are giving a feedback that you have to write yes you requested for one two three points the student even deviated, was out of point. When you just put the oh, out of point, uh, where were you in the class? When you, does it mean you cannot read? In that case, you have killed the zeal of such a student. But you must state whatever thing you want to state positively. And once that is done, you will be able to achieve what you need to achieve.